Hello, my name is Ash and for those who don't know me, I'm an experienced lock picker, commercial lock pick tool designer, and I run a popular lock picking channel here on YouTube. I've literally picked thousands of locks of all different types and today I'm going to react to lock picking scenes in video games, including Skyrim, Fallout 4, Splinter Cell, Thief, Heavy Rain, and others. So first up is Heavy Rain from 2010, and here we see a character about to pick a lock. Wait, let's pause there. Let's look at those tools. I mean, those are like little chopsticks or thick straight wires or something. There's absolutely nothing like any lock picks I've ever seen. Okay, she's going in. Lots of wiggling and twisting going on. I've no idea what she could possibly be doing in there. Looking at the lock type, it looks like an old style lever lock like this which needs a number of levers to be lifted up by a key to the right height for it to open. I mean, you can use two bent wires, different thicknesses to pick one open, but nothing like the technique used in the game. Well, she's in. I mean, in terms of realism, looking at the tools and techniques for the type of lock, I could only give this a two out of 10. And that's only because the character is using the correct number of tools. Next up is a game I've not yet managed to play, uh, Thief Simulator from 2018. And in this one, we're going to look at three different uh, locks picked in this game. So first up is what looks like a low security wafer lock. Let's pause and look at the tools. Looks like a screwdriver and a bobby pin, which to be honest, are legitimate, if not very easy to use tools you could use for this type of lock. So this is a wafer lock. The key moves the wafers out of the way and it allows the core to turn. And here I'm actually using a screwdriver and a bobby pin to pick that same lock, just like they did in the game. So in terms of realism, I'd give this a nine out of 10. It only drops a point because the weird picking technique they're using, it's totally wrong. Next up in the same game is what looks like a Euro cylinder cut away on one side. They have a tension tool to turn the lock and a medium hook lock pick. There they go, picking a pin and another one Oh, let's just pause there for a second. Something's horribly wrong here. The technique and tools are great, but there are no driver pins. And where are the springs gone when the pins are picked? So here in this lock, you can see the key pins on the bottom and the driver pins on top. The correct key will lift all the key pins to the correct height and push all the driver pins to what we call the shear line, allowing the lock to turn. With lock picks, you would turn using a tension tool like this and lift the pins using a hook. I mean, at least they got that part right. And they have an open lock after picking all the pins, which is accurate. I mean, I'd still give this a seven out of 10 since the tools and techniques are correct for that type of lock, but I have to drop points for getting the insides of that lock wrong. Now for the third lock. And this is supposed to be an electric pick gun. I mean, electric pick guns do exist, but they are nothing like that. Real ones are big and loud and they need a tension tool to turn the lock. Uh, the tool used here looks more like a plug spinner a uh, tool used by locksmiths that quickly turns an already picked block. I mean, I'd have to give that one a full zero out of 10. It's just completely wrong. Now we have Splinter Cell from 2002. They seem to be using some kind of tension tool and a hook pick, which are sort of okay. Let's pause and zoom in on that lock. We seem to have key pins and driver pins. I think it's hard to tell. Okay, picking at some pins, but weirdly moving the tension tool at the same time. So we can see here that most of the pins are picked apart from the one in front. And that's weird. It seems to have just picked itself. I mean, for this, I'd have to give it a six out of 10. It has the right sort of idea about the tools you need for that type of lock, but you wouldn't move the tension tool in a lock like that at the same time. Next up is a game I really enjoyed, Fallout 4 from 2015. And like Thief Simulator, which came after it, it looks like we have a low security wafer lock that's being picked with a bobby pin and a screwdriver. It's perfectly legitimate, if not optimal. And I have to give extra points for the solid rendering of the bobby pin. Overall, this gets a nine out of 10 again, as the picking technique with that bobby pin is totally wrong. Otherwise, really good. Here now is Thief from 2014. Let us zoom in to the picks and the lock. It looks like we have some kind of hook pick and a sort of tension tool, which for this type of lock, just like in heavy rain, we know are totally wrong. Ah, okay, well, that's not right. That lock shouldn't have pins in, but using a hook pick is correct for pins. 
it looks like they have the pins in the wrong order with the key pins on top and the driver pins on the bottom. As you can see, in this lock the driver pins are flat on both sides and the key pins have a rounded tip. I'll give this a 7 out of 10. The technique is right for that type of lock but I have to drop points off for getting the keyway style and the pin order wrong. Up next is an earlier Thief game, Deadly Shadows from 2004. Let's have a look at that keyway and picks. Well that's really odd. I mean that looks like a sword toothpick which you'd never use that type of lock. Looking at the style and the shape of the keyway it could be a warded lever lock like this that uses a ornate key that passes through internal warding in the lock itself. These are picks using skeletonized or skeleton picks as they're more commonly known which are able to replicate a number of different keys for different warded locks. Here are some real antique skeleton keys. I've no idea what that weird handle thing bobbing about is or what it's doing either. So for realism I can only give that a 1 out of 10. Now we have a second Splinter Cell game, Chaos Theory from 2005. Nice looking lock with all the electronics, and there are mechanical electrical locks out there. Uh, pausing, we can see the same odd pick and tension tool, just like in the original Splinter Cell game we saw. At least the pins look nicer in this lock, even if the key pins are flat on both sides. This isn't actually much improved over the original, despite the years in between and the graphics upgrade, so again, it has to be a 6 out of 10. Last up, we have one of my favourite all-time games, Skyrim from 2011. I must have sunk over 250 hours into this. So they're using what looks like a lock pick and knife here. Uh, oh, looks like a broken pick. Now that does happen, especially if they're using skeleton keys like these, which can be very weak. And we have another open, but this time the whole front of the lock turns, which is definitely something which would not happen with any leave lock or wardy lock that I know of. Then again, it's a fantasy game, so who really knows what's inside? This could be completely correct for all I know. So I'm giving it a 10 out of 10 and a 1 out of 10 at the same time. Now, Skyrim actually had a skeleton key which could open any lock, but looking at it, I think we can see that this is the complete opposite of what a skeletonized key is, and it's more like a whole bunch of warded lock keys all stuck together. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please consider leaving a like and a comment. It all really helps get this content out. If you want to see more content like this, please also consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.